Oh man, not easy getting seven full-size axes into anywhere. Oh my gosh. What do we got? Well, we got a mix of uh, current uh, Swedish production models, my favorite, Holtzbrook, and some vintage stuff and some custom resource stuff. So on the end here, you have a three and a half pound Montreal uh, Holtzbrook Agdor. All right, that's just the production model axe we got in there. Kind of an exotic entry. That is a four pound Holtzbrook Dayton pattern. That's big for a Dayton pattern. And I restored it and it's got a custom carved handle. Got some Lamy stripes. Interesting design. Talk more about that on the tree. This is a current Arvika 5 Star. Holtzbrook makes this now. You can buy this now. I totally glammed mine up um, and tricked it out and put um, a really high performance edge on it. And this is its maiden voyage. I'm super excited. That is an axe. They're right there. The Holtzbrook American Felling Axe. Dave Canterbury model. All right. One of my favorites. Love it. One of their premium uh, axes with the uh, 25 degree flat or Scandi grind. Really performs well. That is a high test forester. That is an Australian Tasmanian pattern from the heyday of Australian forestry. I got it on a 35 inch vintage hickory haft. <laughs> this is its maiden voyage too. Uh, 26 degree full convex grind. This is awesome. This is custom um forging this is the highest this is uh, an axe made by marcus leibniz and i hope i pronounce that right he is a latvian blacksmith and does extraordinary work has a lot of experience and he made this head i paired it with a pretty exotic spotted gum handle from way down in australia not sure this is the best handle for this axe but we're going to trust it today wow that's some good work actually has a welded bit yeah, the full thing. And this is some American classic. Oh my God. Vintage Axe Works. Warsaw, Kentucky. Look them up on Facebook. Right? Hand carved handle. And this is a, um, a Belknap Bluegrass uh, Jersey, Phantom Bevel Jersey head. Three and a half pounds, right? That's what it was. That is a vintage head. Sent it to him. Said, fix this up, man. Oh my God. He went to town. The thing just says smoking in the boys' room when you pick it up. Really impressive. Incredible leather work. Fantastic craftsmanship. Made in Voyage as well. So we'll see how these cut. Our supply situation is excellent. We have everything from the three major food groups. Jerky, Coke, and beer. Well, first up, Arvika 5 Star. I just finished this project. I mean, just days ago. Pine tar is still a little sticky. Yeah, but it's, man, this is a tuned up ax. I put a lot of time into reprofiling uh, the bevel, bringing it down from its factory fat, 35 plus degree angle down to 23. Very fine convex, works all the way, it's blended really well. Did that by hand with stones. So now I give a shit, right? Swinging an ax, look, I don't know what I'm doing, right? I like axes and I like using them. This tree is monstrous. Um, I'm in bad shape, but swinging an axe, you know, is pretty basic. It's not like modern pentathlon or something. You know, you need special technique and equipment and gloves. It's just swinging an axe. You do it safely. At least this is how I feel, right? You have a good time like any other hobby. Okay, so, whoo. I'm gonna try to cut just a big giant notch. It's huge, it goes all the way back. And I'll just try to do it in a, you know, an even way. You just start to build out that wedge. It's just what I'm gonna do. Um, and I'm gonna do it at about chest height, you know, maybe like right on top of the stomach, just cause that's gonna be natural for me. And, you know, this will take a long time. I'm already tired just being out here. All right, so, but we got the beer module ready, got the water module ready, gloves, eye protection, let's chop. Ah, a little high. It's a big axe. It's big. 
big, <laughs> heavy, powerful. That is just. So I'm just trying to like, you know, how does it feel? How are we gonna do this notch? All right, I'm slow, pace myself. That is. <laughs> that is a great act. I thin the handle, right? More to my, you know, hand size. How those guys get those really nice, even bottom cuts. I have to practice that. Oh, five stars. It is five stars. Eight hundred grit satin finish. I'm interesting to see how that holds up over time. <sighs> I could use Mr. Arvika all day. That was awesome. I'm very happy. Very happy. <clears throat> I want to use a bore, but. While I still have some forearm strength, you can tell right away, felling a tree from the side, hardening your forearms. All right, way different than bucking. So I might have to switch to some kind of bucking task here as I get exhausted. I know I'm weak. High test Forrester, yeah. Pretty worn out, seen some use, definitely seen some use, but there's still bet left. Still got a nice curve, four and a half pounds in the beginning, probably closer to four now, unless it was oversized. And it's on this long 36 inch bear cat handle. Still got the label. Put it in there, got a dowel wedge. That's interesting, dowel wedge. Might have to do a video on dowel wedges. Wedges in general are interesting. But heavy artillery. Ha! <laughs> heavy. Longer, four inches longer than the Arvika. Harder, less accurate. That is longer. And it does change the way I feel. Swinging it, so slowing down. I find myself really slowing down. The Arvika felt more nimble. And this is no stock handle. This is what it had. That's interesting though. So, this edge angle's not much fatter than the Arbica 26, very sharp. But the curve of the bit is a lot more extreme because of the wear. The Arbica has a flatter cutting surface. I think it was doing better. Ah, long. Yeah, I think the shorter handle, at least for me, at 165 pounds, soaking wet, is more in the 32. No jerky break yet. No jerky break yet. All right, while well, we're still doing well. Four pounds. Okay, this is an old Holtzbrook uh, Dayton pattern, which, you know, I haven't seen a lot of them that size. Big classic pattern, but kind of on this uh, trippy uh, hand carved handle. My friend of mine in um, Maine, uh, Eric Callahan carves handles and they're always really unique and really good and this is a big long 32 incher and it's got kind of this 
crazy, I don't know, kind of flying V design. White oak. White oak. So back down to a shorter handle. Different, different wood. Oh. Oh. That Dayton sinks in far. It's got a 26 degree angle on it as well. And it's much, there's less, you know, it's not as wide. The bit's not as wide. It really sinks in. Wow. Uh. 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 <laughs> Sticky. Sticky. Cuts great. Uh, it sticks. It sticks. But definitely 32 inches for me. That's see, that's a shorter thing. Good. Good. Decided. Decided. Speaking of handles, hand curvature is interesting and how it might affect performance. Actually feel of the axe. So it's cool, I got all these uh, axes and I got a lot of several different kind of styles going from just the straight handle on the Holtzbrook American Felling Axe. Really interesting approach, which I like, I do. Um, pretty straight, but you know, but not, it's got a palm swell here. And then nice curvy stuff, starting on the Arbica, uh, you know, but I, I thinned that, that. I brought this part down, and I brought this part in, um, and thinned it on that. So it gives it more curve. And then this crazy thing that I'm about to use, uh, uh, a deliberately, <laughs> ridiculously crazy handle um, from a friend of mine who makes handles. And so, you know, put it on my custom, super uh, handmade head here. We're gonna try that next. Um, but that's something to consider in axe design. Change my camera angle, I changed my chopping angle. Work this way a little bit, had to clear some brush. One thing about a nice sharp axe, man, it'll whittle out brush and stuff like, like a knife. It's great. Okay, this is just excess extreme. I'm gonna try to bring my notch down more. I should start a little lower, right? Super, super curvy. It's the most palm swell I think I got. Maybe that bell now. Mark. The glory of Latvia. <laughs> 27 and a half degrees. Very sharp. Dayton-ish. With some lugs. Alright. Exaggerated palm swell. Makes me swing harder. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm throwing it well. It's fun and safe. Like there's a lot to hang on to, that big swell. And just throw the axe. It could be dangerous, right? Got to be self-aware. Penetrates deeply. Marcus's work is extraordinary. I mean, really, uh, did finish. That guy knows what he's doing. Axes. Going in deep on this wood. Okay. I think it's too curvy, but I like the palm swell. It's a little less, it's a little less accurate than my RB. It really is. Let's see. Oh. Like 
exuberance get inaccurate. While we're on the topic of handles, they're dropped down in weight by a pound to the Holtzbrook American Felling Axe has a 32 inch straight handle, all right? It's a lot lighter, see? So now I've been swinging four, four and a half pounds, a little less, and now I'm, I'm getting more tired. Start out all exuberant, and I slow down. All right. The American Felling Axe has 25 degree scandy or flat grind. All right, look it up, see what that is. They're very sharp. Whew, the larger axes really do bring more power and penetration. They do. See that right now. Now I'm getting tired, you know, because I'm out of shape. But for felling, something big like this, starting to feel that extra pound on a well-designed ax is really worth it. Getting more work done not that much harder to swing. It really isn't. That's a pound less. About the same effort. Really? Okay, so that's interesting. Now would be a good time to bring up the Ag Door, which is the same pattern as the American Felling Axe. Those are three and a half pound Montreal Panners. Finish is very different. Made by Holtzbrook. It's the same axe head, right? But on the Ag Door, you have the Arvika handle. It's the same handle, I think, that they use on the Arvika. All right, it's got the curves, a little beefy, could be thin. Nevertheless, it'd be a good time to throw this in now that we're talking about handles and how that affects felling efficiency. Main difference in design between these two axes is the handle, all right? So on the American felling axe, straight handle. Um, the feel on my wrist is a lot different. And I think it puts more effort, uh, requires more effort from my wrists, from my forearms. They bend a lot more on those cuts. See? So, while I love the straight handle a lot for like bucking, particular felling, maybe the way to go is more curve, right? So, the egg door is not as sharp. I think it'll have a 30 degree uh, convex grind on it. And that's interesting. Penetrates less, because it's less sharp. And that scandy grind doesn't seem to be any kind of speed bump. That's the way it feels. Penetrating farther and gets stuck less. Hmm. Those are good things. Oh. There was a time when I was a professional athlete, not even shit. I was a professional licensed bike racer. I raced road bikes in the age of Lance Armstrong. I'm not even shitting you, I did this. It was my job for about three years. And they kicked my ass. I dabbled around the edges of the sport, you know. Living in a truck, six guys in a Motel 8, you know, Super 8, whatever, fuck. Middle of nowhere, racing these bike races. I could have done this all day long. I literally, six hours chopping, I'll chop. Now I'm out of shape. Okay. Okay, man. That was a bummer. But, uh, Belknap Bluegrass, Kentucky made axe. Classic American axe, restored by Kentuckian. All right, Vintage Axe Force, Warsaw, Kentucky. One of any number of guys who, you know, is a craft and hobby. They, re, they re, restore axes to awesomeness. This is incredible. 
incredible finish. Top, bottom, edges, corners, nooks. He got it all. Very uniform grind. Kind of a semi mirror. Phantom bevels here look great. And then a 27 and a half degree flat grind. All right, like the uh, Holtzbrook. Same flat grind, very sharp. This is great. Hand carved handle, back up to 36 inch, right? Which I felt was too long for me, but it's less weight on the head, three and a half pounds. I'm gonna swing this work of art, you know? Woo! Woo! Snap! Crackle! <laughs> Crackle pop! Okay. Why I'm working over there? I don't know. Just feels like that's where it should be. Work across. Let's see if I can be accurate across the top. Yeah. Harder on my shoulders. Okay, let's sprint. Woo, okay. Less weight on that longer handle is all right. That's all right. Well, I think that's enough. You watched me chop enough. This got me so boring and uh, ridiculous, but maybe you learned something from this. Boy, I did. I had a great time. Seven acts of salt on the tree of pain. It is painful on the forearms, felling that big a tree. Starting to get to the heartwood. And it's starting to bounce, you know, it's really starting, it's like just different dense stuff in there. It's kind of bouncing out. Might trim it up a little bit, but do something else. I guess the champion of this um, session was that Arbica 5 Star, which I'm thrilled. I just finished that, right? And I put a lot of time into that edge and bevel. I really did. And the finish is nice. It's sweet. It's primo. Pimped it out. But I roughed up that edge. I roughed up that bevel specifically specifically roughed it up and didn't leave it all satiny and smooth because I want to use it. I want to take it. I want to use it. I want to sharpen it. I want it to be a tool. Even though it's sexy, I want to actually do that. Performed fantastic, right? But that really aggressive bevel just um, was the best chopper of the bunch. She was queen today. Just awesome in so many ways. Uh, I'm very happy about that. All right. A lot of axes close up, but when she won today, now I'm nice and tired, it's hot now. I hope you learned something, all right? I mean, everything about an ax is simple, but everything about an ax matters. So the Arvika was the sharpest of all of them. Cut more with that extra pound. And the curved handle was that I slimmed, you know, to my, to my feel, you know, customized it to me. That was a couple hours of effort, right? That was a couple hours of rasp. Did it by hand, slowly working it in. Sand it, smooth it, finish it. But boy, does that feel good to swing. That is well worth it for one of your favorite axes. Okay, hey, thanks for watching this. Uh, like and subscribe if you uh, dig axe science. Who's the good boy? You're the good boy. You gotta ride on the outside. Yeah. Good boy. <laughs>